Good afternoon, everyone. We will be presenting our final project of advanced semantic web class today. So, uh, the name of our project is KHL Dasma Ontology. There's a huge, huge amount of multimodal data in our project. We have sensor data, we have questionnaire data, we have data from web API. So, what we want to do is we want to make sense out of this data. We have few rules that, okay, if pollen is high, nitric oxide level is high, can we say that uh, the nitric oxide level of a patient is high due to pollen, so is pollen one of the trigger, or is something else that is going on in the environment due to which we are getting this high value. So what we have done in this project is, we have created a semantic model for data integration from different sources. Sources are for us is web API, questionnaire data, the other sensor data, and to information retrieval to get personalized asthma control and severity level. So if you look at this data abstraction triangle, we have nitric oxide, like that, that's just a value, 0 0.19. We have wheel, luminosity, carbon dioxide value, maybe 1,000 parts per billion. Then can we, from this value, can we deduce that is the nitric oxide high, low? From that, can we say that is high nitric oxide level influences asthma severity? From that, can we say is the reduced nitric oxide level better for the asthma control or not? Or is the asthma controlled or, or moderately controlled or very well controlled? So this is the asthma ontology that we have taken as a reference. So uh, in the etiology class, they have a subclass of environment. So what we have done in our project is, we do not have a sub, uh, uh, better characterization of this environment. So we need indoor environment and outdoor environment. So we made, a, made two classes. One talk about indoor environment, another one talk about outdoor environment. And in the investigation down here, they have a, a class as exercise testing and they, sorry, they have a class of exhaled nitric oxide. But in our ontology, we have made exhaled nitric oxide as an instance and we have not taken this as a class. So we are not taking as a, uh, as a we are basically taking this as my ontology as a reference to make our own ontology. So this is what we have done. And this is the semantic sensor uh, network ontology that we are taking. So we are integrating the asthma ontology, so a few parts of the bioportal asthma ontology with the semantic sensor network ontology. So we are focusing on this part. Sensor, sensing device, output, observation, feature of interest. So this is what we'll be interested in. Observation, sensor output, so sensor detects the stimulus, is sensor output is produced by sensor, observation is observed by sensor, sensor made observation and feature of interest will be a person in our case that person uh, we want to detect a nitric oxide level of a person and so on. So sensor, so there are two types of sensing. One is passive sensing, another one is active sensing. So in our project we have taken pass, so for us the passive sensing is the output from the node, foobot and um, node, foobot and web, web APIs. And active sensing is the questionnaire because we are asking those questions and user is actively involved in answering those questions. So the sensor input is in the form of a numeric data. So we convert the numeric data into the RDF triple and this is how the triple looks like. So for uh, nodes, we say the node detects exit nitric oxide. So the observation, observation result, sensor output is the value of so 0 0.19 uh, parts per million is the output of nitric ox uh, of node sensor and feature of interest is the person and then we'll have a time that when was that reading taken so observation result time and this exit nitric oxide is linked to the asthma ontology it's taken from the asthma ontology that in, it's an instance of the investigation class of the asthma ontology then we have foobot uh, similarly we have done for the foobot so it detects the carbon dioxide level so again the feature of interest is the person and uh, the output is 200 parts per million. Same for the, uh, as the uh, humidity and the questionnaire input. So, Sunja will go ahead. So other than sensor input, we also have questionnaire input. So questionnaire input is a type of active sensing because it requires the user to actively open the app and then answer the questions. So based an app where the user will install in their mobile phone and then they can answer it daily. So the question is a list of questions that ask about the user's condition and also their symptoms frequency. 
and in for each question they will have the each they will have several options different different options for different questions and when we get the data the data we get from the questionnaire is the categorical data in individual for example the zero percent no or one percent yes so for the questionnaire and the answer for the answer often by user we we convert it into the IDF triples and then this is how it's represented in the IDF graph. So we treat treat a question as a sensing method. So the observation would observe by a question and then for 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 example question one here is asked about did you wake up with cough or with last night? And the option is either yes or no. So the question one has option yes, has option no, and the observation is the result that whether if the user choose yes, then the observation result is yes. So other than question and input, we also have web API input. So this is so one say, can you go back? So question one is a class or instance? Instance, instance of the question. Yeah, we have a class for question. So web, web API input is a type of passive sensing because we collected the data from URL. So the data is mainly about outdoor environment. So from the picture is one of the website Holland.com that we collect our data from. We give in our the postcode of the area and then it will give the weighted data for that area. And the data is in numerical value. So this is we convert it into triples and this is how it's representing in the our schema. So for a person, for a person, we know that we have address, the address where the person lives. And then the address has the postal code. And from the postal code, we retrieve the weather data from the website. And then from the weather stack, we have humidity, temperature, air quality, and also the pollen level. And also the time where we collected the data, where the, the weather data. So if we integrate them together, this is the whole complex schema of our KL assignment and we input the data, populate our knowledge base, and then we can do the query. So there are basic query that we can do, like we want to retrieve the date when user woke up due to cough or wheat at night, or we can also retrieve the date when user has maximum natural of factor than 0 0.20. We will show the demo later. So we also can do the complicated query where we want to retrieve the date, when you said that more than two times a patrol, a patrol is a type of medication for asthma. And the day, also the user has external nitrogen oxide greater than 0 0.2.0. So we can do this kind of query. And if we want to, if we have some hypothesis and we want to validate that, that hypothesis, if we can also use that query to complete it. For example, in the day when user has external nitrogen oxide, more than 0 0.20 and has taken two times up the row. So we want to know, is it because of high pollen level? Is it because the asthma symptoms is triggered by high pollen level? So we can do that. So let's try the thing now. Sorry, so, so the last one, the last couple of slides, so in terms of uh, the reasoning you did, what did you do? So you, you, what, what we want before that? So, so we are checking if the uh, is the user taking yeah. Algetol more than twice, and at the same time, is the nitric oxide level high? Yeah. So is it he's taking Algetol due to the nitric oxide level, or how it will affect? Then the third one is. But it could also be that uh, uh, he is taking Algetol, uh, nitric oxide already gone down. Now we can check later that okay, if greater than two, right. then later the next day check the uh, the uh, nitric oxide level that has it gone down or not. Yeah, so this query is we want to treat the day according to the questionnaire data also from the standard data. So the yeah, but it, it could, uh, what is that? We're looking for a pattern mm -hmm. whereby you see uh, a couple of, of significant changes in uh, uh, the effector, meaning allergens or whatever that is. Whether you know, small level is high, or pollen is high, or the indoor humidity is whatever, too low. Um, and um, we 
then are looking for symptoms that there's change. For example, you know, there's wheezing or what kind of things. Then we are looking for, uh, you know, use of medication or change in medication, the gene medicine. Then you are looking for, uh, you know, uh, management of symptom and as the things gone down, right? So a additional, actually, um, use of nitric oxide will become more valuable when the patient is already starting to suffer something, you know, with some symptoms of asthma. So there is this, you know, a particular flow of different kinds of classes being, you know, who's, who are important at a particular point of time. In, so there is a asthma in the life cycle, and they are there in, in uh, understanding the dependencies and one after another and the patterns that continues. That is very interesting because you are uh, suppose you found uh, that the patient has followed that pattern three times. The fourth time you can uh, you know alert uh, when the, you are at the early stage of that you know, pattern research. Uh, see, I feel a bit respect to what the patient said. Uh, in the beginning, you started in a very uh, actually great position that you showed that there is actually hierarchy of as abstraction over vocabularies, but you didn't continue with that for that point. So you use and develop and extend some vocabulary. Uh, for instance, assessment from very actually uh, low abstraction level. And uh, on the other hand, you use other more abstracted level, for instance, person from disability, and you mix all of these. You didn't continue from which abstraction level it is. I would say that, uh, like what Dr. Shea said, that have a concrete, actually, uh, uh, schema definition, for instance, your symptoms coming from this level, actually your um, raw data SSM coming from this level, and then actually in one level you make a conjunction of all of these issues. Okay, so actually our project right now is create a semantic model that can integrate the data from different sources. Mm. Yeah. So after we did this step journey we go further like um, extracting the pattern and then do some personalized decisions mm -hmm. on so see for for example your SSM data actually representation that raw data is going to uh, through the processing after the processing you will another level of abstraction of outcome of that processing mm -hmm. So you need to another representation vocabulary for that level. So you cannot contact, connect, for instance, person to SSN data. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what I worry? <laughs> no, I don't think that's clear. Because I, I think we so talked about SSN that, actually. As I, I expected that you can't do that. relationship that can connect to a person. No, see, for instance, SSM data, after some processing, converted to another level of actually data. You recognize some stuff, like some symptoms, some stuff. Then you need another vocabulary for representing that, uh, that level of abstraction, that level of output. Yeah. This is one thing. The other thing, I think there should be a vocabulary for environmental Actually, we have yeah. used uh, better ontology yeah, for Poland oh, and the temperatures. Okay, that's better ontology. That's correct. So, just one question about the levels of abstraction. Can you give us maybe an example? Because when I look at the graph where you are integrating all the data, how would that level of abstraction is going to work? Um, see, um, um, Level of abstraction means, for instance, I say, very in a very simple example, I say Hossein is a student, but in a more abstract way, I say Hossein is a person. More abstract way, Hossein is a thing. Okay, you're going up, up in that hierarchy. But here, they have sensor data, very raw data. They do some, for instance, machine learning, data mining, actually, and then they 
convert that data to some output. They making sense of that data. The output again should be represented in a, actually um, machine readable format. Utkashin uh, is familiar with an ontology of data mining. But I think you said, like, how are you connecting a person with uh, sensor data, right? Yeah, yeah. Sensor. For instance, so how would you do the liberal abstraction that you are talking about? Hmm? So you are saying that you can use the abstractions yeah. to make a distinction between the... Yeah, yeah. Others. I said what they have done. Okay, that's that's okay in this level. But in reality, if you want to make it actually system, and what they have done, they just... Uh, connected everything to each other. Yeah. SFM data, I mean, uh, information of the person. The, actually, from low level, it's a graph. Yeah, yes. Okay. But when you want to query that, it's better that you have a better schema definition, then you can query meaningfully. In your their query, they had actually, uh, they retrieve from SSN, they retrieve from environment, and so that in ap application level, abstract level, it does not make sense that you, you don't query actually exactly your actually your sensor data. You get think the output, for instance, your application from actually after some processing. Do you get what I mean? But I think uh, from what, what I understood is you can you can build your query to do the level of abstraction that you are looking for. For example, if you are just querying all the sensor no, data see, of that user, so you can see, build it into your query. See, uh, right? actually, for very enterprise application, okay, I'm not an expert in signal, actually, I mean SSN output, but I'm an expert in actually mining approaches. So what I concern, uh, I mean, my user, user of me, not actually, User of me wants to get, for instance, uh, the output of my processing, not SSN. So what I should do, I should actually get this SSN actually representation, convert that representation to a higher level abstraction as my output. But is the, for instance, in your in your level, you're getting trees, and as an output, you're actually you're processing you. Uh, produce location out of the tweets, okay? If you represent that location in a meaningful, for instance, you say beginning of, beginning in X is this and end up and in, in X. I query only get, give me the location, okay? Mm. Doesn't matter what kind of learning approach you are actually employed on the back side, just on the knowledge graph, from very abstract level, you say, give me locations, okay? Your output converted to that level of abstraction. Okay, so would so, that be represent, represented in the how I am saving the data in the graph or in the query? This is my question. Yeah. So when you actually publish your data in that level of abstraction on your graph, so Querying that is much more easier. Mm. And actually, people who are writing application, link data applications, actually, they have less problem to understand. I mean, for SSN, they, they don't need to know about vocabulary of SSN. They just query from, as the user, they just say that, what's the symptom recognized out of this, uh, actually, user? Doesn't matter how this symptom recognized by which algorithm, that's already done and the result exists in the knowledge graph. I agree, yeah. but that I think is a, a layer above the yes, graph. Yes, uh, all of them. Right? Right? So of see, the knowledge right? graph is a, is a single connected labeled graph. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you uh, talking about different layers of the, uh, yes, different views exactly. of the graph? So we, as a scientist, we look at the data from different abstraction levels. But actually from uh, low level granulology is a graph. It's a connected graph. So do you mean like a level above this can be nitric? We just, uh, from this level we get the value that nitric oxide 0 0.19, yeah, yeah. 0 0.20 and the level above will be High 
this one gives us how many times a user woke up with cough or wheeze at night. Three days that this was the time when the user woke up with cough for this. So we have a time, a date. Let's try the second query to find that the nitric of the day where the user has nitric oxide greater than zero point two zero. are the values and this is the time that it happened. Yeah, it's greater than 0 0.20, slightly higher. This is the synthetic data? Some, the oh. values are actual values, but the times are synthetic. Actually, really from what? The old uh, data set? Seven patients? Mm -hmm. So a question, you, you didn't have the semantic web course before, yeah? That's your first time, okay. Yeah, so this query has, we want the day that when user take more than two times up to row, and also the user has extreme nitro oxide greater than 0 0.20. Option B is greater than two. So option one is once it has taken the albuterol, option zero it has not taken the albuterol, option one, one, option two, two times, option three, three times. So there are in the application there are like six options. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four, plus six. So option three means it has taken albuterol so, three, three times. So all these queries, right, are at uh, what you might call as informational level. Now you just start thinking about queries at the knowledge and uh, action level. So the query would be um, what were the um, potential, um, what, what, what parameters change substantially when the user's nitrix excite and, uh, you know, went up, okay, and uh, which, which, you know, what, what might have affected the user's, you know, higher level nitrous oxide could be any of the ledgers, whatever that is, right? And you would need to be able to kind of look, uh, you know, in the time since the previous reading of nitrous oxide, this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So temporal or some other questions may also be put in indirectly without any mm -hmm. say so. So you need to think along that line, uh, as the application level line, right? So you need to ask, well, what inquiry would a doctor make to help understand, you know, what's happening with the patient? And not what data there is that give me this is also data, yeah? So let me show another query. So see, uh, just as a reminding that uh, this kind of demo is for experts who are familiar with the vocabulary. On top of that, you have to make an interface, GUI. So this one gives us that, what were the times when the uh, person had high exam nitric oxide and uh, had V's or cup last night. Mm -hmm. And the pollen is a trigger, so we are checking if the pollen is a trigger or not, not. High pollen is a trigger or not. So we get the result. So just now we get that at this day, the patient has cough, has woke up because of cough and whiff and has greater than 0 0.20 nitric oxide. And we want to check the pollen level of that day and we check that the pollen level is low or low to medium level. So from this we can know that um, this patient, the asthma symptom of this patient is not triggered by the pollen level. And this information if we can enrich the schema, then we can represent this kind of information and then do the personalized decision support.
is what in our future work do. So in our future work, we plan to like enrich the the ontology of schema so that we can represent the abstract of a personalized asthma management, and then we can give the personalized decision support. And if we in the future we have access to the genomic data of a patient, then we can try to link this to the gene ontology so that if we know that this patient, if this patient has the mutated genes that put him at more risk of having asthma, then we can suggest them to take a stronger preventive measures. So these are the future work and that's different of our presentation. So personalized decision support, uh, what is involved there? It's involved there, so we know that, okay, let's say this patient Every time he has asthma, it's because of high level of humidity. So if if one day the, the, the weather has high humidity, then we can suggest this. Mm -hmm. But for another patient, every time he has asthma, it's because of high pollen level. Mm -hmm. So if the bed has just high humidity but low pollen level, then we will suggest him to maybe get medication or mm -hmm. a way of health. Mm -hmm. So, so um, Eventually, so right now, you need to explicitly think about writing a, a particular query to look for that, right? And uh, even if you define a little high level user interface as, as illustrious, that's, sort of, that's just an ease of use kind of thing for technical user, right? Some point of time, you really need to go to something where there is uh, some sort of reasoning going on, whereby, you know, Oh, this data, this, this value is unusual. Mm -hmm. And then does, uh, would unusual value for this uh, particular uh, item affect this user? Has it in the past affected this user? And if so, bring it up as a thing, right? So uh, what would it take for you to generally um, encode? Uh, you know, it could be that you could write rules, right? Or it could be, uh, or, or what else? It's something that is what I think you think about, right? Uh, whereby the system becomes smarter as to things that are different that require further thinking. Right? So the doctor would look at unusual value or would say, oh yeah, you know, yesterday, uh, you know, photo was very high, maybe it is what you have. Now in this case, we have data. And you kind of already, the most of the ability to have the data is within our reach, it should of course data be generated first of all. Having, uh, and then now, to go into that thing, we need to, because if you will write a paper that talks about being able to, you know, collect this data and uh, do these queries, they're all, that's a toy thing, right, by now. And everybody who does anything in civility, all you do, did is was to use uh, the concept of ontology and semantic representation and, uh, Query. That's all you did. Right? I mean, there's nothing absolutely new from a technical perspective. The technical perspective, um, you know, that, that will be new is what kind of processing you will do that is at a high level of abstraction, right? At the actionable level in particular or knowledge level, right? So, th and what does it mean to kind of really do processing not at an information level but at the knowledge level or an action level, the pyramid, you know? You can use AQL, that is a you know, language that IBM had developed for you know, rules uh, you know, to specify and all that. I don't, I think there will still be not, you know, we, there are a lot of people, our own students have had papers on AQL, that won't lead to a publication either, that won't be that innovative. So that, those are, that, that's the kind of original thinking you'll have to think about. The other thinking, you know, where we people do this, okay, well, how do we combine different techniques? So how do we combine semantic query you know, techniques with machine learning or semantic with some, in this case there is not much of a textual thing, so there's no NLP, you know, role of NLP here. But, you know, uh, it may, other thing would be, um, uh, you know, uh, creating a hypothesis based on literature and then validating on your data or not. And you are very unique, you know, very broad, so hopefully you will be, you know, we will collect very broad variety of data compared to much narrower kind of data, uh, particularly non-clinical data, which you know, like environment or weather or things, and that is what will uh, will do this. Okay. So.
So why is this a good, uh, so argue why you should get good grade here for semantic, a lot of semantic web course? So first of all, we starting from the basics, right? First of all, we started with what ontology to use, why we want to use it, why Asma ontology. Then we figured it out. Oh, okay. yeah. But still, that ontology is not at all usable. So we need, we had, like, we actually had a discussion that why Excel nitric oxide should be an instance and it's not a class there. So we did not blindly follow that ontology. Then we figured out how we can link it with the, with the others and what all sensors and then how to write like the triples, how to do the sparkle query, and all these things. Like yeah. the schema that can represent the data. And not, there's not just one ontology, there's ASMA, there's a SSN, a V card, which like from person, address, postal code, and the other ontology. So four ontologies. Yeah. What did you do in terms of um, interaction or connections between the four ontologies? So uh, the sensor that the exhale nitric oxide. So there's a sensor node which detects exhale nitric oxide. So we link the that sensor with that instance. Then for the uh, environmental data, we get APIs. So we we come up with a separate class which was not there in uh, sensor. So sensor ontology was dealing with just normal sensors, but we had questionnaire data, we had web API data. So we wanted to use that data. So how to use that, how to put that in the RDF format or the schema format. Then we figured it out, okay, both are a type of sensing. So one is, like, both are, one is passive sensing, one is active sensing. So we argued that why we need to club that into the SSM ontology. Can all these ontology actually, they are centered around a person, mm. so a user, because the user is the most important thing we want to help them in the mm. management. Mm. So mm. actually all these, Data, sensor, data, personal data, and the web and data actually are linked to the user. Mm. So the user is just like the center of this scheme. Right? So we can say that this is a patient. So there is time for this idea. Observation and observation coming in for web API also. So could you compute on interval? Compute on. Time interval? So right now we just have date. So time we have put it as date as a string. Mm -hmm. So if you change it into so measure the date then time. what would you do if you would compute on the interval last? So you say you know since the last observation. Because the data we did not have full access to the data and yeah. some of it we dummy coded it. So, so we need to take care, okay, this is high, this is high and then mm -hmm. how to But the, you know, the, there is something called time ontology. And it defines the uh, Using that, that concept of the interval show. there, right? Time interval, overlapping interval. Uh, for example, um, uh, you'll have to, suppose you want to um, tie different observations um, at the same time. <coughs> or, you know, that are related, different related observations. Now, observations will not be collected at exactly the same time instance. Uh, A is too wide. Uh, second, second, a millisecond that uh, sensor accuracy is too, you know, uh, too narrow. So you basically will say, well, within, I during an evening, during an afternoon, during, uh, you know, uh, you know, between the two consecutive uh, readings, these concepts are not, you know, basically won't, you can't do anything string there, and you, you know, you can't, uh, you'll have to have more uh, sophisticated thing about time, right? That's an example. When all of this comes, and when different operations like time interval is on time ontology, some other thing about high value on of a particular sensor data is on another ontology. And when all those things come, concept come together, and you can link the data, analyze data at this level of cons, you know concepts like time interval versus uh, uh, unusual um, sensor reading. Mm -hmm. Or high sensor reading, or whatever those concepts are, right? As you described earlier in the, you know, then, and you search for relationship between them, mm -hmm. then you are getting into some level of intelligence, right? That's what you must do. So, making progress along that line would be really the more important thing. That's where the real semantics come. Use of sparkle doesn't give you any spirit like this.
and putting a string in a you know value that doesn't give you any semantics, right? 